Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. I'm so glad to see you. I hope you're having a great week. I just finished recording my live stream for November. So if you're a member, you can go and watch it. Thank you to all of our channel members, by the way. Uh, we have over 230 channel members now, and I get messages from our channel members all the time telling me how uh, they have passed NCLEX. So I'm very proud of all of you. That's the whole reason we're doing this. We need more nurses in the profession and we, you need to pass NCLEX to be in the profession. So, uh, I'm very excited that so many of you are passing NCLEX. It's just very, very, uh, encouraging to me. So if you're interested in taking the full clinic review, cause we do offer the best NCLEX review in the business, in my opinion, uh, you can go to clinicreviews.com to sign up for the online on-demand review or for a live review. I do them out in Los Angeles in December and either May or June. So keep an eye out for those if you are in the mood to go to Los Angeles and see me live for three days. And it is it's different from what we teach what we teach here on YouTube. Uh, I do not cover the same things we teach in the review. So it's a really good, great, great review. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to test your knowledge today. You are definitely going to get EKG questions on the NCLEX. And if you find that you don't know this information, you can go and watch some of our EKG videos that I've done here teaching you how to read an EKG. So watch this. And then if you're like, ooh, Sharon, I didn't know any of this stuff, go watch our videos, okay? So the nurse is caring for a patient with acute coronary syndrome and AFib who has a new prescription for metoprolol, which monitoring is essential when administering the medication, ST segment, heart rate, troponin, or myoglobin. All right, the nurse is caring for a patient with acute coronary syndrome, which is ACS, is both MI and unstable angina, and we treat them very similarly. So now we call it acute coronary syndrome and AFib, who has a new prescription for metoprolol. So when you get a question like this, and it says, which monitoring is essential when administering the medication? That means this question has nothing to do with ACS or AFib. It has to do with metoprolol. So the ACS and AFib is superfluous information. We're not monitoring those two things. We're monitoring the toprol. Now, for ACS, I'm looking for chest pain, right? And for AFib, uh, I'm looking for heart rate or conversion back to S, uh, to sinus rhythm. But with metoprolol, alol, O-L-O-L, alol drugs are beta blockers, y'all. And beta blockers slow heart rate. And that the reason we're giving a beta blocker is to slow heart rate because people with AFib tend to run fast. So we're not monitoring ST segment, troponin, or myoglobin. Troponin might be what we watch with ACS. That may be what we watch with that. But this is specifically asking about the medication. So don't be distracted by the other disease processes they talk about in the question. The nurse is caring for a patient with AFib. In addition to an antidysrhythmic, what medication does the nurse plan to administer? Heparin, atropine, dobutamine, mag sulfate. So you either know this or you don't know this. This is just factual information. It is not a high level question. And we do have to give heparin along with it because people with AFib are prone to throw clots. With that atrial fibrillating, that means the blood is turbulent. Turbulent blood flow always is a risk for clotting. So with AFib, you have turbulent blood flow in the atria and they're at risk for clotting. Are they gonna be on heparin for the rest of their life? No, because people can't be on heparin for the rest of their life. They may be on an anticoagulant for the rest of their life, but not heparin. Heparin is what we are uh, putting them on until we decide what we're gonna do with that AFib. Are we gonna try to convert them out of it? Are we gonna let them live with that forever? What are we gonna do, okay? But they have to be on an anticoagulant uh, while we're, well, as long as they're an AFib, they have to be on an anticoagulant. The nurse is caring for a patient on a telemetry unit who has a regular heart rhythm and a rate of 60. A P wave precedes each QRS and the PR interval is 0.20. Additional vital signs are as follows. Blood pressure 118 over 68, respiratory rate 16, temp 98.8. All these medications are available on the medication record. What action does the nurse take? Administer atropine, administer digoxin, administer clonidine, continue to monitor. All right, let's look at this. So they have a regular heart rate that's within normal limits. The rate is 60. Y'all, that is within normal limits. Do not go, well, that's low. No, it's not. 
60 to 100 is within normal limits. That means 60 is within normal limits and 100 is within normal limits. Okay, you, you don't say, well, it's close. It doesn't matter if it's close. Okay, it's within normal limits. So regular heart rate, normal. 60, normal. P wave before each QRS is normal. A P wave is the atrial contraction. The QRS is the ventricular contraction. So atria ventricles, atria ventricles, atria ventricles, P QRS, P QRS, P QRS. That's normal. That's expected. Uh, the PR interval is 0.20. It's supposed to be between 0.12 and 0.20. And the 12 and the 20 are within normal limits. It's like the heart rate 60 to 100. Uh, the PR interval, the PR interval is the time it takes to get from the SA node to the AV node, essentially. Okay. And that should take 0.20 seconds or less. So 0.20 is within normal limits. Additional vital signs, blood pressure, 118 over 68. Within normal limits, y'all. You, if you don't know what the within what the what the normal values are for vital signs, go and watch the video I did on oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve and vital signs. I, it looks like it's just on the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. I should have named it something else because it's got really good vital signs stuff on there too. So that blood pressure is normal. Respiratory rate 60. Normal. Temp 98.8. Normal. Every single thing on here is normal, y'all. So you continue to monitor. You will get questions on the NCLEX where everything is normal and they want to know if you recognize that and know that we just continue to monitor. It could have said document this. If all it said was document it, that would have also been the right answer because document it means it's normal. Okay. Be prepared for an NCLEX question that tells you everything is normal and you've got to interpret it as such. A patient with AFib with rapid ventricular response has received medication to slow the ventricular rate. The pulse is now 88, for which additional therapy does the nurse plan? Synchronized cardioversion, EPS, anticoagulation, radiofrequency ablation. All right. So atrial fibrillation, the risk is, because you have fibrillating atria, the risk is that Fibrillating atria because it's getting all these electrical impulses. It's, get, it's sending out the atria are getting 300 plus electrical impulses. The risk is that out of all those 300 electrical impulses, a lot of them are going to get through the ventricles. So if 180 or 200 of those 300 electrical impulses get down to the ventricles, then you have a rapid ventricular response. So somebody comes in with AFib RVR, AFib rapid ventricular response, AFib RVR. We say, well, I mean, obviously we'd like to get them out of AFib, but first we've got to slow that ventricular rate. So what it's saying is, hey, we slowed the ventricular rate. We gave them some medication to do that. Now it's 88. Now what? Y'all, you already know the answer to this. If you get this one wrong, you were not paying attention two questions ago. What did I say we always have to do? So don't go, well, synchronized cardio version. No. EPS. Yeah. Well, they might. Yeah. We might do synchronized cardioversion. We might do EPS. We might do ablation. All of these are appropriate interventions for, uh, for the patient, but that is not our decision to make. And there's no way we could know which one, like, I don't know which one is going to be. They're all appropriate interventions, but I do know that all AFib patients, as long as they're in AFib, they have to be on an anticoagulant. So I hope you got this one right. I was double checking you, see if you could interpret it the same. You know, I taught you that, see if you can still do it. All right, question five. The nurse is caring for a patient with unstable angina. Unstable angina means chest pain when it's not expected. So expected angina is like when you're exercising or when you're shoveling snow, you know, when you're doing something active and you have angina. Unstable angina is unexpected, like in the middle of the night when you're just sitting there watching TV. Uh, okay, so unstable angina whose cardiac monitor shows VTAC, ventricular tachycardia, which action is appropriate to implement first? Defibrillate with 200 joules, check the patient for a pulse, cardiovert at 50 joules, check the patient's oxygen saturation. Okay, y'all, you don't know whether to defibrillate or cardiovert until you know if they have a pulse. You have to find out if they have a pulse. VTAC, I don't know if the statistic is right. I, I use the statistic just because it makes sense to me. But I would say half the time they've got a pulse with VTAC. Now that could be totally off, but I'm just telling you, you have to think that way. Otherwise you're going to forget to check for a pulse. If you're like, well, they never have a pulse. Yeah, they do. 
They absolutely do have a pulse with VTAC. You got to check it because if they don't have a pulse, then you defibrillate. If they do have a pulse, we can cardiovert. Okay. All right. So that's why you need to check their pulse. VTAC. Remember VTAC is a patterned rhythm. VTAC is a V patterned rhythm. Think V, 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 V. That's a V pattern rhythm. That's VTAC. V fib is all over the place. Just no pattern, no pattern at all. Remember, V fib is no pattern. VTAC is a V pattern. All right, six. A patient admitted after using crack cocaine develops V fib. Ooh, after determining unresponsiveness, which action does the nurse take next? Prepare for defibrillation, establish an IV access, place an oral airway and ventilate, prepare to administer epinephrine. All right, so this one, you have to know what is the primary treatment for V-fib. V-fib is no pattern, right? It's all over the place. And V-fib never has a pulse, never. But we defib V-fib. We defib V-fib. So don't say, but it's a next question. Wouldn't I have to, I mean, if they're not breathing, wouldn't I have to do an oral airway? Isn't it ABCs? No, not for V-fib. It's not. With V-fib, you defib as soon as you possibly can. Now, if the if I defib them and it doesn't work, we're going to then, yeah, we're going to be ventilating them. Yeah, we're going to be giving them epinephrine and we're establishing an IV access. But the primary treatment for V-fib is D. Fib and you do that as soon as you possibly can. And don't go, well, they've got to get the cart there. Y'all on the NCLEX, it's a perfect world. The cart is already there. Which waveform indicates proper function of the SA node? The QRS is present. The PR interval is 0.24. The P wave precedes every QRS complex. The ST segment is elevated. Okay, we talked about this previously. Do you remember what we said? QRS represents what? ventricular contraction. The PR interval is supposed to be what? 12 to 20, 12 to 20. A P wave precedes every QRS. That's the atria ventricles, P QRS, P QRS, atria ventricles, atria ventricles. The ST segment is elevated. No, it's not supposed to be elevated. An ST, elevated ST segment indicates usually uh, an MI, myocardial infarction. So we know the QRS is not the SA node because the SA node is what is at the top of the heart and it fires and then the atrial contract, okay? So when you say someone has a sinus rhythm, it means the SA node is firing and controlling the rate. So you want to see a P wave that precedes every QRS. That tells you the SA node is in control of the rate. Oh, am I talking too loud? The nurse is caring for a patient with advanced heart failure who develops asystole. The nurse corrects the graduate nurse when the graduate offers to perform which intervention? Defibrillation, CPR, epinephrine, oxygen. All right, y'all, asystole is a flat line. There is no more dead than asystole. Dead, dead, like dead. It's bad news, like no, no lie. 95% uh, of people uh, never come back from asystole. The V-fib, we can defib them, but asystole, that's a dead heart. There's no electrical impulse going on. And the only way to bring them back is to get some kind of electrical impulse going through the heart. So defibrillation does not work on asystole. I mean, it doesn't hurt them. They're already dead. You can't kill them any worse than they already are. If you defib them, it just doesn't do anything. And it doesn't bring them back. It doesn't speed along the process. It does nothing. Okay. All right. So that's the end of that. Look, if you were like, I did so good on that, Dr. Sharon, I knew all the right answers. You, that's awesome. Seriously. That's awesome. Because those are some of the primary rhythms you're going to see. Now you can go back and watch some of the EKG videos if you want to, but if you got all those right, you seriously, your, your, your knowledge is, is not bad at all. Um, but if you're like, man, I just don't know any of that stuff, then go back and watch our cardiac videos. Um, look, it's, uh, it would be under the cardiac playlist, cardiac playlist, if you want to find it. I'll see if maybe, maybe I can put those in, um, show them at the end here. Hopefully I can. I hope you have a great rest of your day. All right. Thank you so much for being part of our channel, being part of the clinic review family. Bye.